independent shops, cafe, detrimental to uh, um, local business and out of ca character. Um, and th th we should be raising the tone and not lowering it, they, they say, inappropriate next to a card shop. There's, um, I think essentially there is a further um, reasoning that um, amusement arcades uh, encourage antisocial behaviour. And so while the morality of gambling is not a question that one can consider, the uh, potential for crime and disorder, of course, would be a planning matter. Um, and then there's uh, discussions about other, other um, facilities being available within the area. Uh, but by contrast, we also had quite a large number of um, messages of support. Uh, anyway, I'll just I highlight the location of the thing, since apparently I've got a laser on here, but it doesn't actually show up. Oh. <laughs> the little red dot on the, on the uh, 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 mapping there is where the site is. There is a better um, location plan to follow uh, after I've shown a couple of images. Th this is the unit in question. It's the centre of um, a group of three quite close to the corner with Church Road. Um, and at the cur uh, currently it is in, on a short-term lease as a, it says pop-up vintage, but I think that uh, probably means a second-hand shop effectively. And I've shown a couple of other photos that um, illustrate other um, betting opportunities. This is uh, 75 metres to the south in the secondary uh, shopping area um, where there's a coral uh, bookmakers. Um, there's the location plan showing you again where it is, redlined, and um, uh, there's some floor plans because part of this application, there's only one very slight physical change to the building and that is to move the frontage um, further out slightly, as you can see if you compare the, uh, the, the plan as existing and the plan as proposed, but there's no real change to the character of the frontage or impact on the conservation area. Uh, just to clarify the point about um, the current local plan and the town central areas, you will see the little red dot again appears on this map showing that it is in the primary shopping area. And you'll also note the slightly paler blue areas which are considered to be secondary shopping uh, facades. So uh, the key issues with this particular site are whether there's any impact of the change that's proposed on the viability of the town centre as a whole and the primary shopping uh, facade in terms of the, uh, or area should I say, in terms of the current policy. And um, given that there are a number of voids in the area at the moment, and given that the other gambling opportunities n number, um, uh, uh, well, three other sites, um, there's the old um, cinema that's a casino further up the road um, and a, another betting shop opposite that. I think it's, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I can't remember the name. I did have a photograph of it. Um, and then there's the um, coral book, uh, bookmakers on the corner, uh, 75 metres to the south. But it, that's not considered to be an excessive level of, of gambling that's diminishing the character of the of, of the shopping centre and, and also weighed in the balance the matter of uh, the number of voids that are currently present, which actually is quite unusual for Gorston. It's been quite a thriving um, centre in, in recent years. Uh, then we look at the uh, emergent policy, which slightly changes the concept. We now have a protected shopping frontage. It w is still within that um, in terms of emergent policy, but again, uh, consulting with colleagues, it's not felt that, that, that one could resist this particular change given the um, uh, number of voids and the overall balance of the shopping area as it stands. So that bring, brings us, I haven't actually mentioned crime and disorder there, perhaps I should do. Um, obviously a lot of the objection letters were to do with the morality of gambling and um, the harm that it does to society but that's not a matter that we can consider as planners because it's covered essentially by the licensing acts however it would be reasonable to consider crime and disorder if one thought it was going to occur but this is classed as an adult gaming center so we then come on to the final point which is retaining control of that adult gaming center status the uh, betting shops fall within a sui generis use class. Uh, 
But that doesn't mean to say that you can change from one sewer generous use to another sewer generous use without needing planning permission, because it's not like the use classes that are defined where one can change within those use classes. These are all individual um, uses considered to be of needing some planning consideration when change occurs. And so um, if there is a materiality to the change, one can still expect a planning application. However, we've also, moving on, and in conclusion to some extent, suggested that we have a condition on there to make it clear that it should remain an adult gaming centre. If you go back to the beginning of the report, you'll see that I did um, research the uh, legislation regarding the definitions of adult gaming centres and uh, uh, family and, um, gaming centres. And it's essentially about the uh, payouts that the machines make in cash terms. So one can use that legislation to some extent to um, frame a condition that would ensure that it re remained um, an adult gaming centre. To some extent, one might make the case that, it can do, that you could control it anyway, because there would be a material change in the character of the use. But we think belt and braces on this one, and um, that, so we recommend that. But they've asked for particular operating hours, so we don't see any reason why we shouldn't impose a limitation to its uh, hours of operation in line with that which the applicant has asked for. And then we've got the standard conditions on timing and compliance. Um, oh dear, I need my other specs. <laughs> Ah, yes. Um, active shop front. There's this concept of trying to retain an active shop front, and a lot of these um, adult gaming centres will have a small dis shop type display to attempt to, con to continue that um, active shop front. So we've asked for, for further details of that in making a recommendation for approval. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, any technical questions for the planning officer, please? Councillor Wainwright? It's all this strobe lighting in there. You can't see what you're doing. It's just because you said that um, there was a casino. It's not a casino anymore. It's a, it's a cinema. So there isn't a casino in Goulston. There used to be, but it's not now. It's now a cinema, and there's no casino in that cinema. Just for information. OK. Any other technical questions? Uh, Councillor Wright. It's Magic City. Yeah, just uh, uh, very quickly, in terms of the, the, the change of use, um, I always uh, was of the opinion that there had to be evidence that the, um, the property was no longer viable for the, um, the, t the type of premise that it is, i.e. Um, a retail unit. And I would have thought that you know, there should have been ample time for that to be advertised um, before this come for a change of use in terms of a, a gaming centre because you know the whole nature of the Gorson High Street is quite um, different to, to anywhere else. It is a small high street and I think any change from that I think will probably um, be to the detriment of the, the high street. So I'm just wondering whether or not there's anything within the legislation or within the rules that we have to um, be sure that there is no other um, applicants for the uh, for this particular site as a retail unit as opposed to a gaming centre. Could you uh, clarify that, uh, Chris, please? I'm just looking at p policy R1, which I think is the is the emergent policy, and that doesn't contain a commercial uh, viability appraisal requirement. I think that probably reflects the fact that the government is seeking to allow fleetness of foot with regard to changes of use in shopping centres to try and keep um, occupancy levels as high as they possibly can. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councillor Fairhead. Yeah, I probably should know this, but if we, uh, if this is approved tonight, does it then have to go for licensing to get their licence? Uh, that's my understanding, yes. That it's, it's, yeah. As it's a licensable activity, it would need to have a licence. I'm not an expert in licensing, I'm afraid. Maybe others could, yep. could comment. Okay, any other technical questions? No? Okay, so I call um, Andrew Woods, uh, the agent. 
Thanks, Mr. Woods. You've got three minutes, OK? Uh, the police and councillors, I don't need three minutes. Um, just in answering to the two questions that the councillors have raised, these premises have been on the market for 24 months with three separate agents trying to find tenants for them and my, my client, MGS Amusements, Mitchell Swan, who is here this evening, was the only bidder at the end of the 24-month period. So they've been actively, uh, the, the landlord has been actively looking for tenants. No retail tenants have come forward. Uh, Mitchell Swan came forward. Um, and in answer to the question raised by the other councillor, absolutely, we um, will need, if, planning, if this planning change of use is granted, then we will need to make an application to Great Yarmouth Council for an adult gaming centre licence under the Gambling Act 2005. And as Chris has pointed out, that, that is a different type of licence to an amusement arcade family entertainment centre licence. It's a different licence to a betting office licence. And the applicant has no issues at all with any of those conditions, including restricting use to the adult gaming centre which is uh, just up for over 18s. Uh, the only reason I, I'm here this evening, apart from to assist with any questions, is M MGS Amusements are based in Goldston. They've got two of the premises. They're proposing to invest 350,000 and employ six staff at these particular premises. It's an important uh, step for them, so they wanted uh, me to be here just to assist if possible. And, and also, that there's a couple of objections which clearly come from trade competitors, which raise a number of issues, and we were just concerned with regard to those points. But the reality is, Councillor, uh, Mr Green's report deals with all of those points, and I agree and endorse with every, uh, everything that uh, Chris Green has said in his report with regard to policy, adult gaming centres and, and the conditions that have been said. Um, so I would, um, unless there are any questions from uh, councillors, I would ask you to consider granting the application as per the officer's recommendation, subject to the conditions uh, to allow MJS to open this uh, particular site in Goldston. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr Woods. Are there any questions for Mr Woods from any councillors? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Hang on a second. Oh. Councillor yeah, Roy. Just, uh, yeah, just very quickly. You, you mentioned that the premise has been, or um, um, well, New Look has moved out uh, two years ago, 24 months ago. It's now obviously um, uh, um, a temporary um, place for the vintage uh, shop there. You say it's been um, advertised, bearing in mind, of course, we'll come through 18 months of the COVID. Do you not think it should, would be an opportunity to try to advertise it for a longer period? Um, so that we can probably take advantage to make sure that there is no retail outlets that would want to come into those premises because I, I like to see that the high street is a retail outlet rather than one which has got change in facilities on there. I think my answer to that, Councillor, would be that, that that isn't a requirement un under policy. It, it might be something that in individuals would deem to be appropriate, but it's not something which is, is a requirement or... or I would respectfully suggest is a, is a reason to refuse the application. I would also suggest that, that 24 months even during COVID is an opportunity for any, any retailer if they wanted to, to take this site and it might, might have been a better opportunity than others. But uh, that, that's my answer, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rob, did you just want to come in there? I, th I think, Chair, if we can just clarify about the policies that we're predominantly working to here is that we've put a, a lot of weight against the emerging policy R2 in particular, which is about the protected retail frontages which Chris identified the site to fall in, into. And um, that policy has moved away from any expectations of, doing, of providing evidence of marketing because that's more in keeping with the government's NPPF expectation of a variety of uses within shopping areas or town centres. Um, even though it's called a shopping frontage, the MPPF would say that you should be encouraging lots of different types of uses within that defined area. And so the policy R2 that is currently uh, imminently about to be adopted um, is setting out the three criteria that Chris has written about at paragraph 6.10 in the report, which says uses, you know, a variety of uses will be permitted even if they involve the loss of retail, providing that their primary function is to provide a service or 
a, um, a service or sales to visiting members of the public and they must provide an active ground floor frontage and they must not undermine the vitality and the viability. So the whole crux of it is to ensure that there is a, an active use that will have a role um, for, the, for the community and that it's one of many different types of uses that you could find in a town centre or a shopping area. So I think um, for us to try and put any weight against a lack of marketing would be a little bit inconsistent with national policy and emerging local policy. So um, hopefully what we've um, discussed in the report is that there is enough activity going on there um, and enough retail units in the, to still provide for people's daily needs, which Chris has described in his report already. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, any, qu any more questions for Mr. Woods? No? Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, so we now uh, move to the debate and the decision. That's over to the councillors to decide. Councillor Flaxman Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to move the recommendation subject to the conditions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Wainwright. Yeah, I'd certainly like to second that. I mean, MJS, they're a respected local company, putting in a lot of investment, six staff been empty for 24 months um, you know we haven't got a big influx of these I mean magic cities just down the road I've never known any antisocial behavior there I don't think it's ever ever been uh, reported uh, they're well well established so as I say I think it's a good addition to the high street and um, good luck to them and uh, I'd second that uh, recommendation okay any other councillors wish to speak uh, Councillor Barbara Wright yeah, I, I just find it really sad that uh, the clothes shop closed and we've got another gaming machines. We've got Magic City, we've got two bookies, you know, and I just think the, the students, when they come out of college, they pass there. Do we really need another one in that high street? That's what I'm going to, that's all I'm saying. Councillor Fairhead. Yes, maybe I should have declared the interest of being a ward councillor, but anyway, I will now. <laughs> but no, I have to support uh, Councillor Wright, Barbara Wright, because I just think it's in the wrong place. And I think it will be affected by antisocial behaviour, because if you look across the road, there's the Feathers pub, and a lot of the people come out of there, they'll drift across, and you can just see it. There's been a lot of antisocial behaviour already in the high street during the last few months, which I know everybody's suffering from, but I just think that they're applying for the wrong, for, to put that in the wrong place, and um, you know, just to say, oh, well, we found something to go in there, to me is not, yeah. is not right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Paul Hammond. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think that we have to have this go ahead because empty premises are more detrimental to the high street than something that's open and thriving. It, it may not be what we all want for whatever reason. We may be opposed to gambling. We may not. That's, that's personal opinions. But open premises are better on a high street than closed premises and boarded up. It shows the place is open and trading, and it's, it's better for the economy. So I fully support this. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Henson. Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm just mindful at one time we've had two casinos uh, down that high street, uh, both opened and both closed, so I can't see any problem with this application. Anybody else? No, we have a proposer. Uh, Councillor Flaxman-Taylor and a seconder, Councillor Wainwright. All those in favour to approve, please show. All, all those against? Any abstentions? It's carried, that's, Chairman. Yep, yeah, that's carried. Thank you. Uh, so we move to open number six. Uh, item 6, uh, Oasis Amusements, Beach Road, Hemsby, pages uh, 58 to 67 of your agenda. And that is with George Bolan. Okay, George, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, okay. Um, so the application is for the installation of six six-metre tall steel columns supporting six mesh light and internally illuminated letters. 
each of 2.3 metres in height and 1.8 metres of width, and associated groundworks and infrastructure, including some important platform. The application has been put forward to members due to Great Yarmouth Borough Council itself being the applicants. There's just a quick update from the time of writing the report. Um, since the report has been published, we have received comments from Environmental Health who have raised no objections to the application. The location of the illuminated letters, Spell and Hemsby, are on the south side of Beach Road, um, located to the rear of Oasis Amusements, and can be seen from the east side of the recently construction, constructed Richardson's Car Park. Letters are proposed to stand on a pole, um, which will be concreted into the ground and reach a height of six metres, um, which will be seen from Beach Road, Hemsby, as you sort of travel, travel down um, towards the beach. Uh, the location of the site is also within the prime commercial holiday area. Beach Road is a well-established uh, area for tourists and local, locals to visit throughout the year. Um, the proposed letters are to attract visitors to the area and allow a visual advertisement of the location Hemsby. Um, the letters also allow visitors and locals to take photos and um, selfies to advertise their visits to the local area um, and publish on social media platforms. Just some uh, plans and photos to go through. Um, so as you can see, uh, the elevation of what they will uh, propose looked like and the measurements there. Um, they're proposed 3.5 metres from ground level to the bottom of the letters. Um, and then they're proposed to be uh, 2.3 metres in height from, from there. So overall, we're looking from ground to the, the top height there is 6 metres. Um, the letters are spaced um, 0.2 metres apart. Um, and as you can see at the bottom there, they're sort of concreted into, into, the, uh, into the ground for uh, stability. This is your typical illuminated letter, so it, it, this sort of gives you an idea of uh, what the other letters will look like there too. It obviously outlines B, but they're sort of mesh lighting within the letter there, so it will sort of, uh, the light in itself will be able to show, show what it's spelling out. Uh, this is sort of an impression, um, to no sort of scale there, but it's an impression of where, where the, the lights will be located um, um, and, and sort of to a rough height there. You can sort of see that the fence panels there would be around about 1.8 to 2 metres, so 6 metres above that is sort of the rough location there. That's the, the site plan there. So uh, the, the sort of uh, the building to the front of Beach Road, just, just north of the red line there, is actually being demolished since... Um, the last OS update. Um, and there is now a recently constructed Richardson's car park, um, as you'll see as we go through the photos shortly. So that building to the front there isn't there, so there's more of a visual. You can, you, as you come down Beach Road, you'd be able to see the, the sign a lot more than what the OS map sort of portrays there. So this is, this is sort of taken, so where that building was, this is sort of where the photo was taken there, um, and that will be located um, just where that vent is basically on the building, just behind the fence and sort of extend above. This is straight on, so this, this shows uh, where that will be again. So this is looking away from the sign, so you can sort of see um, the Richardson, the movement over the road there, um, and Beach Road run through the centre, so as you sort of drive through, you'd be able to see that there. And as you can sort of see, that's the recently um, constructed car park, car park there. Again, looking from the other side of Beach Road, um, that would sort of, where the Richardson sign to the car park is there, that would sort of be just above just above that, so you'd be seeing that as you're coming along Beach Road. And again, as, as you move along Beach Road, you can see there's already like the Oasis Amusement sign there already in place. This is located further, um, further to the south. There is an existing sort of caravan park there, um, which is sort of at a lower level to the, to the caravan site, but is located a considerable distance away. And just, just to the side of the Oasis of Moose Bill, you can see in the, the roof in the background there is a residential property. Um, it, is, it is felt that the, the building, the Oasis of building itself will block out any sort of light to the, to the residential there and that work wouldn't be seen from, from their property. Um, it, the environmental co health comments also include that they, they don't feel there's, a, there's any harm to the residential um, property there too. Uh, the consultees consulted on this um, have been Hemsby Parish Council uh, have raised no objections, Norfolk County Council Highways have raised no objection, um, 
environmental health have also raised no objection and there's been no um, objections from nearby residents. Uh, policies to consider against this proposal uh, are fully included at pages 59 and 61 of your reports there, um, but are summarised here. Uh, core strategy policy CS8, promoting tourism and leisure and culture. Remain and borough wide local plan policy BNV22 um, in respect of advertisements. Um, and the following policy from the emerging local plan part two should also be noted, which is the L1 holiday accommodation area. The, the proposed letters, again, as I proposed to the south of Oasis Amusements, uh, which run from the east side of Richardson's car park. Each letter is located 3.5 metres from ground level, um, as explained. Uh, Beach Road is located within the prime commercial holiday area. It sees vast amounts of tourism and visits from residents of the borough each year. And Beach Road is predominantly made up of amusements, children's ride, hot, hot and cold food stalls and many more attractions. The stretch of Beach Road leads itself um, also to the entrance of the beach as you, as you travel east. Uh, regarding the level of luminance at night, the, the proposal suggested the letters will be illuminated from dusk until midnight. This has been considered by officers and is proposed that any approval could be conditioned so that the, no illuminance will occur outside the hours of 9am to, to midnight there, which is consistent with sort of the other attractions within the area. Um, it's also proposed that the letters are to be operational through the summer season. Um, we'll, for the, for the, actual, the, the letters themselves, the protection is to take them down um, within the winter season there. So it's, it's going to be on any approval granted would be a condition that they will, um, can only be erected during the period of the 29th of April until the 1st of October in any given year. Uh, the tourism and ec economic benefits. Uh, the location of the site is within the prime commercial holiday area. The proposal is considered to be an attraction which will invite visitors and local residents of the borough to come and view and although it will only contribute on a small scale, it's considered to benefit the local economy by boosting the use of tourist facilities across the borough and attracting visitors, which is consistent with the aims of policy at CS8. It is concluded that the proposal is considered acceptable in the proposed location and area. The area located within the prime commercial holiday area and will bring much needed benefits to the tourism and leisure industry. The proposed letters are considered in keeping with the design and character of Beach Road and with this area hosting numerous signs and illuminance activities, the application site will have an acceptable relationship in amenity and, ca and character terms, subject to the imposition of appropriate conditions. It is therefore recommended to approve, subject to the restricting the time the letters can be illuminated and the removal of the letters outside the summer season. The proposal will comply with the aims set out in policy CS8 of the Great Yarmouth Local Plan core strategy and remain in policies BNV22 of the Borough Wide Local Plan and is consistent with the aims set out in emergency, emerging policy L1 of the final draft Local Plan Part 2. Thank you. Thank you, George. Any technical questions from councillors? Uh, Councillor Fairhead. Yeah, you did mention that there was one resident property that would be overshadowed, they thought, by the, the light. Is there any other residential uh, properties around there that would get the glare from those lights that face across? Because sometimes at night time they can show a long way and that does, you know, upset people. Um, so directly as you look to the, the west of the red line, that's um, further amusement facilities there as you come down Beach Road. Um, the property that is located to the east and just south of the, uh, the red line there, um, the, the sign itself isn't going to protrude above the roof height, so they wouldn't actually be seen from the residential property. Um, and the caravans to the, to the, sort of the south there um, are considered like a considerable distance away. The, the light levels of, of these lights are considered low level, and in speaking to um, the applicant, um, it's sort of... in. in considered to be sort of like your yeah, traditional outdoor light, sort of fairy light sort of thing. They're not sort of projecting any light. They're just to sort of illuminate the, the sign so you can see what it's, it's saying there. But there shouldn't be any sort of uh, mass amount of glare coming off from, the, from these lights. Hey, George. Uh, Councillor Tony Wright. It just, uh, just very quickly, uh, why is it the, uh, being erected the 29th of April? I mean... We seem to miss Easter every single year, and I, I would have thought that Easter would, would be quite a prominent part of the start of the season. Why not the, the 1st of April? You know, at least that gets most of the Easter 
the week ends in. Is there any reason for that? Um, there's, there's no reason as such. We were, we were sort of in discussion with the applicant that that would be the appropriate times that they would they would like them to be out. Um, I think that there is room. Obviously, it, the reason for the condition is for the protection of the white the lights with the bad weather um, that can, we can sometimes see in those period of times. Um, so it was just it was just to protect the lights more than actually um, than anything else. Well, I won't put them up in the summer then with the weather we're having. <laughs> Thank you. Any other technical questions, Councillor Jill? Councillor Jill, sorry, could you just turn your microphone on, please? Thank you. Uh, is that better? Yes. St Nicholas' car park used to open later in the season and they changed it because people used to want to use it. And I, I honestly believe, as Councillor Wright has said, is that you should start in April. You know, if you're worried about the weather, then you better turn them off all the year round because you can never guarantee a nice day every day in Norfolk. Thank you. Any other questions for George? No? Okay, there's no speakers or anything on this um, application, so we move straight to the debate. Councillor Hammond. Uh, move to approve, subject to conditions. Yep. Oh. Councillor Freeman seconded. Anybody else um, wish to speak at all? No? Okay, we'll move to the vote then. All those in favour to approve, please show. That's unanimous, Chairman. Okay, thank you. That's passed, thanks. Thank you, so we move to item number seven, uh, application for the Pleasure Beach Gardens, pages 68 to 81. Um, that's with George again, yep. Thank, thank you, you, George. Chair. Okay, so the application again um, is similar, similar there. Um, the application is at this time for the installation of 13 eight metre tall steel columns supporting 13 mesh lighting um, letters, each of 2.3 metres in height and 1.4 to 2.2 metres in width, and associated groundworks and infrastructure including the support platform. Again, the application has been put forward to members due to the Great Yarmouth Borough Council itself being the applicant. Um, again, quick update from the time of writing the report. Um, Norfolk County Council Highways have now raised no objection to the application and Environmental Health have also confirmed no objection to the application there. Uh, so this time the location of the illuminated letters uh, will be spelling out Great Yarmouth uh, are on the East Parade side of the Pleasure Beach Gardens, gardens south of the Pleasure Beach Gardens Cafe. Uh, the proposed letters are supported on stations that are proposed to reach up to eight metres tall and will be seen from, from South Beach Parade, they're the main strip. Uh, Pleasure Beach Garden is located within conservation area number 16, which relates to the seafront, and is within the Great Yarmouth Golden Mile. It is also located just south of the prime commercial holiday area, uh, with the closest part being at the Wellington Pier, and again, it is, it is a well-established area for tourists and, and locals to visit there. Uh, the proposed letters are to attract visitors to the area and allow visual advertisements. Um, and again, it's to advertise the, the, the Great Yarmouth and also allows people to take photos there to, to put up onto social media and advertise the, their, their visit. So, uh, just an elevation again, explained in the dimensions. Uh, the Great Yarmouth uh, lights here are proposed to be 5.5 metres from ground level to the bottom of the level. Uh, letters this time and again 2.5 metres in height which will sort of bring it close to sort of the 8 metres there. Um, there will be a gap of a metre between the spelling of Great and Yarmouth um, and again the spacing is 0.25 of a metre um, again with, with concrete, um, concrete platforms at the bottom. The typical illuminated letter again and, and the impression there of, of the location and, and what is to sort of be expected. Again, you can sort of see the fence that will be located just in front of that um, and extended above. <clears throat> this is an aerial photo. So you can see there you've got the, the Pleasure Beach, uh, more of the theme park, but to the, to the south, uh, just in front is the Pleasure Beach Gardens, which is uh, for more um, children's rides there, um, extending over to the uh, car park. And then you've got the Royal Naval Hospital accommodation just, just on the, the left of your screens there. So photo looking down through Pleasure Beach Gardens as to the location of where the, the spelling of Great Yarmouth will be. 
and, and a closer image of, the, of where the proposed site is. Looking back away from where, the, the, so as you can see there, you can see the, 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 the rides, and I think there's a, a mini golf course there sort of thing, and then there's more of those sort of attractions throughout. This is taken from, from the, the opposite side in, into the beach, looking back in, obviously that's a lower ground there, um, so that, there's, um, that, that would just see the other side of the fence there where the letters to be. Again, to the, the south of the, the, the proposal is the, the Pleasure Beach, you can see the, the roller coaster and the, the flues. And that's the, the Pleasure Beach Cafe to the, um, to the north of the site. This is looking over from um, the, the recreation ground there. Um, so as you can see, the, the green building there is the Pleasure Beach Cafe. So to the right of that would be where the letters are proposed. Um, we have had some objections from uh, some residents within the Naval um, Hospital uh, area. Um, general uh, objections are to outlook and loss of view there. Um, but as you can sort of see, there are, there are numerous sort of posts and, and signs and, and attractions as you, as you look through. Uh, consultees consulted again are Norfolk County Council Highways, no objection. Uh, the conservation have raised no objections due to the proposal being in keeping with the character of the existing area. Environmental health have raised no objections. Uh, we haven't received any comments to date from the county ecologist um, and we've received three objections um, and one letter of support from uh, nearby neighbours. Their concerns, um, as sort of suggested earlier, are with the strength of illuminance, uh, blocked views, um, late night illuminance, um, and the application originally lacking details. Policies to consider uh, against the proposal, again, are fully included at pages 69 to 71 of your reports. Uh, Summarised as follows the core strategy policy CS8, promoting tourism, leisure, and culture. Uh, remain in borough wide local plan policy BMV 22 advertisements um, and the following policy from the emerging local plan part two uh, should also be noted with, in relation to GY6 which is the Great Yarmouth seafront area. It's assessed against the residential amenity. The, uh, the residents comments were received prior to further information being provided um, to support the application. Um, since then we haven't um, received further objections to the application um, and all, all, all um, information has been published online. The, the proposed letters are to be located south of the Pleasure Beach Cafe and um, with the letters running north to south along the parade for 27 metres. Each letter is located at 5.5 metres from ground level there again. The, the, the letters are located approximately 285 metres away from the nearest residential properties, which is the Great Royal Naval Hospital site there, and is therefore considered to have some impact on the views and outlook of the nearby um, properties, but not to such extent that they are likely to have a significant, significant detrim detrimental effect um, on their amenities there. In respect to the concerns uh, regarding the level of illuminance at night, the proposal has suggested the letters will be illuminated from dusk until midnight, um, and they'll be, uh, for any approval granted here tonight, will be um, conditioned from 9am in the morning till, till midnight there. And again, and again, the lights are of a low level, um, and it's not proposed to sort of project any sort of light away from the letters there. Um, the letters are proposed again to be operational through the summer season and um, will be conditioned from the 29th of April until the 1st of October in any given year. Uh, the location of this site is just south of the prime commercial holiday area and is amongst the Great Yarmouth Golden Mile stretch. Although it will only co contribute on a small scale, it is still considered to benefit the local economy by boosting the use of tourist facilities across the borough and attracting visitors, which again is um, consistent with core strategy policy CS8. In conclusion, the proposal is considered acceptable in the proposed location and area. The area is just south of the the prime, prime area again and the Great Yarmouth Gold Mile will be much needed benefits to the tourism and leisure industry. The proposed letters are considered to be broadly in keeping with the design and character of the Pleasure Beach Gardens area and with this area hosting numerous signs and luminous activities already, the application site will have an acceptable relationship in amenity and character terms subject to the imposition of appropriate conditions. 
is therefore recommended to approve the application. The application, the proposal is considered acceptable in its proposed location. The area is just so for the prime commercial area and within the Great Yarmouth Gold Mart and will bring much needed benefits to the tour tourism and leisure industry. The proposed letters are considered to be broadly in keeping with the design and character of the Pleasure Beach Gardens and, um, and a long a relationship with the meaning in character terms subject to the imposition of appropriate conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, George. Any technical questions for the Planning Officer, please? Councillor Jail. Can I ask, are these um, the type that wind goes through? They haven't got a backing on or anything? Sorry, no. Sorry, they haven't got a backing. <laughs> no, they're sort of like a mesh lighting, so sort of like a, a fairy light sort of design there that you, you sort of see. So Cheers, thank no you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Mogford. You put, use your microphone, <laughs> Councillor Mockford, please. Sorry about that. Uh, the question I'd like to ask is, um, can you read Great Yarmouth as a mirror image from the beach side? Is it, is it illuminated at the back? Or it, I'm, I'm just thinking of navigation, of navigators coming up there in the fog, because any, any more glare on, the, on, on that seafront is a, a disadvantage. So that will, that, that will be seen all the way around the letters there. Um, but it, as, as suggested, it is a low level light. It's not to project any light. It's just to sort of show the shape of the letter there. So it is a very low level of illuminance um, and isn't, hasn't been considered um, by ourselves or environmental health to cause any, any issues there. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Councillor Hammond. Yeah. Um, I fully support putting these signs up but I think maybe this may not be the right location. Um, well, you can't read Great, you, Great Yarmouth's going to be backward looking at it from the sea. And I don't think that's a great thing for Great Yarmouth to be seen backward. <laughs> if I can put it any other way. <laughs> any other questions for the planning officer? No? There's no um, speakers again on this application, so we move to the debate. Councillor Jail. And I say, um, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't be unhappy with this. This is my, my ward, I should declare that. But there, and the reason is that if you go from King Street to Main, uh, sorry, no, Dickens Avenue, every lamppost along there has a coloured light exactly the same as these. And they're bright, they're on from dusk till... Um, well, I think they're on until about two o'clock in the morning. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't be unhappy with this. Um, I do understand it's, you know, the brightness and everything, but um, as it's been mentioned, it's over 265 metres away from the nearest residential property. And there was something else I was going to say. And um, I think it would be good for the town. And as for its location, no matter where you put it, you'd have a problem. And about, about seeing it at sea, I drive along that road in the winter when it's foggy and the, those flickery lights are still on. You can't see them. So as far as I'm concerned, I'd be happy to support this. Thank you. Councillor Wright? Yeah, just, uh, just very briefly, one, I mean, I support the, the, the project and um, um, I don't see it being sort of a huge um, benefit, but I see it as a as a benefit of putting us uh, on the map, so to speak. But my concern is that it appears that the lights are similar to the lights that we had down Regent Road, which was the canopy of lights, and the problem that they had down there was when you have sections of them going out. And I think that, that that's, I mean, I know it can't be a planning consideration, um, but there has to be an immediate response to this. Should one of the lights fail or the curtains break or so, because they are very, very sensitive as we saw down regional, hence the, the, the removal. So, uh, you know, I'm concerned over, you know, if, you, if you've got one or two of the letters missing, that just looks awful. So I hope they take that into account. Yeah. Anyone else wish to speak? So it's recommended for uh, approval. Have we got a proposer, please? Councillor Wainwright and a seconder. Councillor Carpenter, yeah. All those in favour to approve, please show. All 
right. Any against? Any abstentions? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, item number eight, um, 11 Bath Hill Terrace, um, pages 82 to 93. That is with Robert Tate. Robert, thank you. Thank you, Chair. So this application is brought before committee because Great Yarmouth Council is the applicant. And as a disclaimer states on page 82, the monitoring officer has checked the application and has confirmed that the application has been processed normally. So the application is for the conversion of a former guest house into two dwellings at 11 Bath Hill Terrace. And this is part of a pilot project, which is de detailed and more information in paragraph 1.4. So the site is a end terrace property. Um, to the east is 10 Bath Hill Terrace, which is in Great Yarnford Council's ownership. And then to the west there is an alleyway, which serves the rear of the properties along Nelson Road Central and also some of the dwellings to the rear of Rodney Road. Um, the site is within the development limit of Great Yarmouth, as you can see on this map here. And then you can also see the St George's Conservation Area, the horizontal lines, is just adjacent to the site as well. Um, so in April 2021, the application 062100074CU was approved, which is this one here. You can see the plans and elevations under delegated powers. This application um, also included the demolition of the rear covered yard and approved the conversion of the site into three separate flats. So you can see on the, um, on the floor plans on the kind of left-hand section there, Sorry, Bob, could you just bring your microphone a bit closer oh, sorry. to you? Thank you. Um, you can see on the left-hand side there, the, there's a two-storey unit and then two single-storey flats on the left-hand side. Um, if we move across, you can see the existing floor plans as it is now and the existing elevations. And then these are the proposed floor plans. So the... Um, the dwelling which will be 11A, the one located on the left, is almost like an upside down kind of house. So the bedrooms, or two of the bedrooms will be located on the ground floor with another bedroom and living accommodation on the first floor. And then the other dwelling is more of a conventional kind of dwelling. Um, the three bed unit contains, um, or it provides 101.5 square meters net living space, which exceeds um, the national guidance for a dwelling of this size and the windows are positioned to make sure the adequate outlook is provided. There is also a rear yard provided just to the south or here yeah, it is the south there which um, provides some cycle and bin storage as well and although it is limited um, given the kind of context of the site and the locate or proximity to St George's Park and the beach it is considered that this would be um, acceptable in this case. Um, the two-bedroom unit has a more conventional layout and provides 70 square metres of floor space, which meets the national guidance for a dwelling of this size. And as you can see, this has a larger rear garden as well there. So if we look at the um, elevations here, these are the proposed elevations, we can see that the works which are detailed at paragraph 4.4 on this plan quite clearly. Um, the property is in a poor state of repair currently, which you can see in the photos, which will come up in a second. And these works will represent an improvement and uh, an improvement over the previously improved scheme as well, especially with regards to like fenestration and that kind of stuff. This will have um, benefits to the setting of the conservation area as well. So this is the site as it is currently. So this is standing from the opposite side of Bath Hill Terrace and you can see um, that the, <laughs> the property is in quite a poor state of repair at the moment. Um, this is the alleyway going down to the rear and then from the other way as well. Looking within the context of the street, the, um, the property is, forms kind of like a continuous line of dwelling to the similar appearance, but obviously the other dwellings are of a higher standard of, um, or a higher quality of repair with regards to this one. And then just some more photos from the other direction as well. And from this one, you can just about see it. Unfortunately, I can get a photo of the rear, but um, the rear covered yard has yet to be demolished. But um, as you can see here, it was approved to be demolished as part of the previous application. If we move through the committee report now, so there have been no objections from Norfolk County Highways and no other consultation responses have been received. 
Um, the main policies in this instance are HOU 07 and HOU 17 with regards to residential development and subdivision with the other relevant policies from the core strategy and paragraphs from the MPPF and emerging local plan part two between paragraphs 3.3 and 3.9 in your report. Moving on to the assessment, so the principle of development, the site is locate, located in a sustainable location close to the town centre. Um, as such, it has good access to shop services and public transport and future residents would not be reliant on the private car. Um, moreover, there is also cycle storage in the rear yard areas. If we go back to this plan, you can see it quite clearly there as well. Um, the living space and amenity has been um, discussed earlier and this proposal represents an improvement over the previously approved scheme, especially with regards to outlook. The, um, the flipping, so the upside downness of the dwelling to the left means that the bedrooms have better outlook and the main living spaces either look out to the front or to the rear there as well. Um, I've discussed the rear guards um, already and, and with respect to neighbouring amenity there aren't any um, extensions or anything proposed so there shouldn't really be any change or loss of outlook light or additional disturbances in that regard. The site is located within the orange 400 metres 2.5k indicative habitat impact zone and a shadow template HRA has been received and is deemed appropriate. As it says in the report the, um, the, H or the HMMS payment hasn't been received yet but um, any recommendation for approval would be subject to that being received first. Um, so no biodiversity enhancements have been proposed either. The county ecologist hasn't commented on the application, but given her comments on the previously approved scheme, um, the provision or conditioning measures such as bird boxes, most likely swift terrace boxes, would probably be acceptable in this situation, with two or three located on the western wall which is the most sheltered elevation there. And therefore, with, um, with that in mind, it is recommended to approve the application subject to the conditions on the screen there. Thank you, Robert. Any technical questions for the planning officer, please? Councillor Jail. Is this in the conservation area? Um, no, it's just to the south of the conservation area, so it Thank runs you. through the middle of Bifle Terrace there. Councillor Wright? Yeah, just um, one of my concerns is, um, and you point out in your, your report, Robert, that the, the the two flats. And first of all, can I say that I'm glad that we've reduced it from the three to the two because I think that is a more sensible approach. And I wish some of the developers would do exactly the same rather than trying to crush it in. But what my concern is is that the two bedrooms property has got a bigger garden space than the three bedroom property. And it just seems to be inequitable that we've got, you know, a three-bedroom property presumably going to have children there and there's going to be no garden space. You do mention in the report that it could be possible to have a more equitable space uh, between the three, although it's not necessary. Is that something that we could actually look at, uh, Chairman? Because I, I, I do think it's important that if we're going to provide, um, you know, better accommodation for a family unit, then although they've got the St George's Park and the Green Side, I think within the confines of their own property, they should have the same. It just seems wrong that we're, the two-bedroom property's got more space than the three-bedroom property. I'm not saying one should have more than the other, but perhaps that's something that we should um, ask for the um, officers to consider um, to try to, um, uh, to allocate more space for the three-bedroom property. Yeah, OK. Councillor Roy, do you want to come back on that at all, Rob? No? Yes? No? We, we were sort of telepathically communicating that I think, Councillor Wright, it's important that um, we recognise that this is a, a recommendation we've made on the balance. So, um, yeah, it's not ideal that the, the garden is as small as it is, but all things being equal, there are more benefits that outweigh that particular detrimental impact. Um, I think there's scope that we, the plans could be tweaked with a bit of negotiation with, with the architects and the applicant and, and Rob working on that. That's something that we, we should be looking at and we could perhaps do that. Chair, I'm looking at you here for um, delegated authority to see if we could revise those plans. We, we'd leave that for members to take a vote on. Um, and I think also it's, in, it's worth bearing in mind that 
Currently, the previous permission made um, an express point of demolishing that rear courtyard um, building structure in there. I think we need to add an extra condition on thinking about it, just saying we ought to see that area demolished and the gardens provided in whatever form they finally take before occupation. So we'd probably add that on as an extra condition add on, added on to the recommendation there. Um, so to summarise, yeah, I think we could probably negotiate and if needs be come back on uh, the next meeting uh, if we couldn't quite get that uh, um, revision for you to satisfy you. Yeah, yeah. okay. Councillor Hammond. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just a, a, a query. Um, Is this on point question? Two, well, it, question, query. The first application on April 2021 was done under the Gallagher but the applicant was the same, Great Yarmouth Borough Council, yet now it's got to come to us because it's Great Yarmouth Borough Council. So there seems a discrimination that you were doing as delegated then, but not now. Um, maybe it's a question for the Monton officer. <laughs> I think um, Caroline had concerns that um, things were going through the system as delegated powers and that's why for um, the um, process was revised to bring it for the integrity of the decision making process. So it shouldn't have done in the first place? <coughs> yeah, just to confirm, it's, it's basically a tightening up of procedure. It, shouldn't, it, it is a connected application and it should have come. Yeah. The committee Thank on you. the previous yeah, occasion. I would agree with that. Yep. Yeah. Just, just very quickly on the, the previous, question. Yeah. On, on, the, on the previous point, the <coughs> I wouldn't want this to hold the, the, the issue about the space uh, up and come back to the next committee. Because I'm, I'm quite happy for it to be delegated because I do accept that the the actual provision of the accommodation yeah. is more important than the the, yeah. the other issues. But it is if it can be done. I'd much be, be much happier if, if we could actually allocate more space, but I, I wouldn't want to hold it up yeah, that on that Yeah, that can be basis. done, Robert. If that's just done under delegated powers, so it doesn't hold anything up at all? We, we, uh, we can seek improved design through negotiation, but there's obviously there's... If you feel strongly enough that the size of the garden needs you to rethink your planning decision, then we should bring it back if we can't get uh, an improved garden space at the back. Okay, um, any other technical questions for the planning officers? No, okay, thanks Rob. Uh, there's no speakers again, so we move to the debate. Councillor Wainwright. I'd just like to move the recommendation. It is disappointing. It's got to come back to the committee, I would have thought, as Councillor Wright said, you know, it'd be good if the officers could just sort this. If it can't happen, it can't happen. But, you know, these sort of properties are desperately needed yes. in the town. Yep. And, uh, you know, we need to be getting on with this as quick as possible. Um, I should think the neighbours will be over the moon with this because looking at those photos, yes. it's an absolute disgrace. Yep. So, um, you know, I think we should just be getting on as yep. quick as we can. And, you know, if the officers can adjust the garden space, fine. If they can't, they can't. And yeah. uh, just get on with it. Otherwise, yes, we'll be talking I'll about this in that. another six weeks' time. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Jail. Can I say it will absolutely improve the area because Trafalgar Road is one of the best roads in Great... In, in fact, I would say in the area of Great Yarmouth for bed and breakfast accommodation. They make a great effort, and this has been an eyesore for a yep. great number of years. The only thing I would add, if it, isn't, if it is possible, is it possible to have a condition that they demolish the rear before they start the improvements? Yeah, can that be done? Yeah, Rob, yeah. We will do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Hammond? Yeah, anyone else wish to speak about it? So the proposal was uh, Councillor Wainwright, yeah, and second to Councillor Hammond. All those in favour, please show. Unanimous. Yep, that's carried, thank you. Um, item number nine, um, any other business? Uh, have you got anything, uh, Robert? Yes, members, uh, start with an, an, an apology that in your agenda pack you didn't receive the list of applications that we would that we processed um, through to a decision between um, the 1st of May and the 31st of July. I know you normally get those at the end of your agenda, so 
it just occurred to us that we'd, that was a bit of an oversight for missing that out. I have emailed you all um, a list of those um, applications. There's uh, 35 pages worth of delegated decision, um, one, one page of um, items that went to committee. Um, they, they went to committee a few uh, months ago and it just took um, a little while for Section 106 agreements and other matters to be resolved before a decision could finally be issued. Um, so you'll have those in your email inboxes. Um, we could flash them up on the screen if you wanted to have a quick look through them all, but there are quite a few, and we're happy to correspond via emails next week if, if that helps, if that's easier. Okay, everyone happy with that? Yep. Okay, um, and before we go, um, I'd just like to wish um, Jill um, a happy retirement. I understand that you are retiring from the council after 38 years, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, on behalf of the committee, wish you all the best in your retirement. You can give us a speech if you want. No, all right. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the meeting. Sorry? Yeah, Caroline? It's just a correction for the, to pick up for the minutes, really, just to note. Um, but for the record, that on the first item heard, so item number five, um, the council was incorrectly named as the applicant in the paper, so we just need to pick that up and correct it in the minutes. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thanks. So um, that's the end of the meeting, and thank you, everybody, for attending tonight. Thank you.